Hey, good evening guys and welcome to the LGBTQ Voice. My name is Tracy Welch. So I'm just going to make sure my Facebook is working here. If you guys have any comments, questions or concerns, you know you can hit me up. Let me just get it up. Woo woo! Alright, we are here. Make sure my volume's down because you guys know how I don't do that very well. Let's see, I didn't do it very well again. Um, yeah, guys, we're talking about hate today. You know, what's going on in our community, around our community, and, you know, around the United States today. Uh, we have a lot of anniversaries that just came up, um, and I, I know the puzzles just showed up on the screen. I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about um, the New Bedford Guide and sponsorship as well as the puzzles attack. Um, I did uh, an ad, or what do you call it, the picture, and posted of the 13th anniversary of the puzzles attack, and the Bedford Guide was gracious enough to say, hey, listen, why don't you help donate to the LGBTQ Voice and the South Coast LGBTQ Network? And on that page, people are, well, what, what are we donating for? And somebody tagged my name, they, um, a friend of ours, Jeff, um, tagged my name because they knew that I'm part of the community. And I explained to him the things that we do in our community. So we put up, um, you know, the Pride Cafe, we put up um, the NB Adley, we put up the yoga, um, and just so many things about it. He said, oh, thank you so much for letting us know what's going on. Well, on that same same. Page. And again, the Bedford Guide has over 95,000 followers. Not everybody's going to be LGBTQ friendly, but this is just a couple days ago. The person said, unless they're wearing a, mag a MAGA hat, which is Make America Great Again, they definitely deserve to be attacked. That was just a couple days ago on the Bedford Guide's Facebook page. And as you guys know, you know, we run this show from the Bedford Guide. Um, and it just kinda, it, it, it's just kind of heartening that... And again, what kills me that gets the most is the guy's name's on the page. I'm not going to say his name because he's not getting his five seconds of fame here. Um, but 13 years ago, we had two gay bars in New Bedford, one Puzzles and one LaPlace. A young man went into the bar, 18 years old. Uh, I am going to say his name today. I usually don't say it. Uh, uh, Jacob, uh, I'm going to sorry say it wrong because I don't say it enough, uh, Robita. Um, there's a different, couple of different stories going out there, but one of the stories is he had a fake ID, went into the bar, asked if this was a local gay bar, uh, ordered a drink, and uh, pulled out a hatchet and a gun and um, hit one gentleman in the head with a hatchet. Um, proceeded to hit another guy that was helping the first guy. Then he ended up shooting the first guy, shot another guy across the bar, and three people were um, wounded. Two people were critically wounded, and he fled down south. Um, he fled to West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, where he kidnapped Jennifer Rena Dunlap Bailey. Um, he kidnapped, and again, the story is it may have been an ex-girlfriend, but he kidnapped her and continued to go down south. He was stopped by um, a Gasville, Arkansas police officer, James W. Sell, at the Brass Door restaurant parking lot on February 4th. So this happened February 2nd, 2006. So he was um, on America's Most Wanted. He was down south. The police officer stopped him for an apparent traffic violation where Robita um, opened fire and killed um, Officer um, South. He fled again, um, continued down south where police officers ended up putting those spikes across the road and hit his tires. And uh, he still went for like five more miles or so until his car hit a couple other cars um, and the police stopped him. However, unfortunately, he killed the young lady that he kidnapped. The police opened fire on him, and Robida ended up killing himself. So, um, again, our community was hit hard by that. And even, like I said, whenever we had our 10-year commemoration in uh, 2016 at LaPlace, what an amazing event. We had people from the community came out, and we changed our other local gay bar, LaPlace, into puzzles for the night, because puzzles didn't survive. A lot of people didn't want to go back. Um, I'm not really sure. It was a bar I did attend and go to every now and then, especially when I used to live um, on Cape. I used to love to go get the popcorn and you know a couple of cohogs, have a beer, play some pool, and hang out uh, and watch a great show from either the Mr. or Mrs. Puzzles back in the day. So we invited all the Mr. or all the Miss Puzzles, and what a great commemoration that we had. And to kind of bring people together, you know, where we were at and you know um, where we've been, you know, and you know our, our future goals for our community. Um, so again, you know, having the puzzles attack and just seeing that on Facebook, just, you know, to help raise money for the organizations and the programs that we run for the network, to help people in our community and to keep seeing the hatred on these pages is so upsetting. I think I told you guys a little while back that 
I post on the Bedford has its own Facebook page. Some towns do, just as the Bedford guy does. And someone posted on one of the Christmas, I believe it was like a Christmas thing, saying, you know, we're closed for the holidays, you know, and she's like, LGBTQ voice, question mark, and I told her what we did, and she's not interested. Well, I'm okay with that. Not everybody needs to watch our show or be interested, but I wanted to kind of let people know what's going on in our community. And I posted something else again with all our logos of the events that we do or the things that we, the programs that we run, and she said, don't post on my page. Well, it's not one particular person's page. It's New Bedford's page, and we're allowed to post basically anything that's not a huge political rant is what basically is what it, it says. What's going on in the community, different events. Um, so this hatred right here, I don't know where the person that, you know, can see the New Bedford guide um, post, because again, they have 95,000 followers. I don't know where he was from, but I did screenshot his stuff. So God forbid something happens down the line, we have a trail. So I want to kind of tell you guys about hate crimes and what's been going on. So in Massachusetts, hate crimes are crimes that are motivated by the offender's bias towards the victim because the victim is a member of a protected group. Under the primary Massachusetts hate crime statute, there are three elements of hate crime. One is underlining criminal offense. The offender commits an assault or battery upon the victim or damage the victim's property. Uh, two, offender's intent. The offender acted with the intent to intimidate the victim. And three, victim's protected character. Um, the offender targeted the victim because of their victim's race, religion, national origin, uh, sexual orientation, excuse me, gender identity, disability, or other protected uh, characteristics. So on here right now, um, Leo, excuse me, not Leo, God help me. Leo is who you contact for, for, for uh, sponsorship for the show. I think uh, AJ put that up at the beginning. So if you want to sponsor the show, a segment of the show, a piece of the show, do you do your whole topic, you know, your whole show topic takeover, he hit up Leo at newbedfordguide.com. So I want to make sure we, we say that several times. Because the money that we get, the proceeds ask to you. But AJ put up um, a link to the HRC blog, hate crimes and what you need to know um, and how that can help you. So if something does happen to you um, in the future, you know, you kind of kind of take take a look at this right now. And um, it kind of tells you the steps you need to do, you know, what information you're going to need. And it's kind of like a log of what's going on. I mean, you guys, some of you guys know I'm a foster parent. So everything that happens every day, I actually just kind of jot it down in my own little calendar book. This is what happened today. This is what happened yesterday. Um, and things like that. So keep a log. Like I said, all the hate crimes that I see, excuse me, not hate crimes, all the hate that I see on our pages. Like that guy said he wants to attack us. So, Oh, and there's other things in the past. I actually screenshot those because at some point they could be deleted real quick. I just want to make sure I have that person's name and I have it archived. So I want to make sure that you know as we can be as much safe as we can be. I know AJ just put up um, Andre Andre Silva um, card right now. Andre was on our show. We did a whole show about discrimination. I know we're talking about hate. Not all hate, you know, crimes are you know against the LGBTQ. Um, but I want to kind of put his card up there that if you guys have any incidences that you need that's a local office in new bedford but they're in massachusetts so you can hit up um, andre you can walk in he had said it when he came here um i actually saw him at the human um human rights day that, that they had december um at the harbor hotel from the human relations commission so we all kind of work together in our community we've had the police chief on our show talking about um you know hate, well hate crimes are um in, in our community towards lgbtq and everybody in general so um yeah again you know the facebook thing just kind of kind of threw me off t um this week but i want to kind of let you guys know hate crimes reported in mass um hit a 10-year high in 2017 we were actually up nine percent where the 10 major cities in the in the united states were up actually um 12 percent so we were actually under i guess the, the, the major states um, but I also want to kind of tell you guys that when we did our transgender law, uh, we wanted to kind of keep that law in place. Um, what was it, 68, 69, 70 percent of people voted to keep it, yet that leaves 30 percent of people don't agree that transgender individuals should be allowed to use public accommodations. So 30 percent, I mean, that's still a high number. We talk about the statistics that, yes, it passed, yes, it passed. But there's still, you know, a lot of people out there that don't feel that the rights should be given to transgender individuals. Um, so perpetrators of hate crimes are typically brought under criminal prosecution, and in some cases can also be prosecuted uh, civilly, civically. Excuse me. 
Um, so I know he put up the link for the, um, the hate crimes. There's actually, uh, HRC has a link to resources. So I want to kind of make sure that we're kind of using HRC. They're great to have for us. Um, I've been a member since 2006. You can actually go on their site, help them with funding, and they do so much across the country. And actually there's a human rights campaign office in P-Town as well. Um, and a shout out to Kathy Reno who runs that. So I like the, the, um, the link to the resources. When you click the links, it actually goes to different things. Um, and, it, and it actually helps you, again, um, with resources. AJ's gonna put up a map one. Is that the map one, AJ? So um, you have the link to the um, Movement Advancement Protection Opportunity Project, LGBTQ youth. That, that, that must be it. That's the stats, yes. What, honey? That is the stats, yes. Okay, that's the stats, but did you, do you have the, um, the link for it? I posted the link. I'm sorry? I just posted the link. Oh, there it is, psych. Sorry, we're a little bit, we're like seconds behind here and what I see here and here. Um, so there's actually a movement advancement project for LGBTQ youth, and it's actually a bunch of resources for kids and um, what, how parents can help and things like that. I know Eileen Dugas, our network coordinator, is working on our own resource guide for this general area of um, the South Coast, and obviously we, we pull from Boston and, and other regions as well. Um, but I know it says 7.9% of youth identify as LGBTQ. That's 3.2 million kids, ages 8 to 18. Uh, and more than half of, of these youth are of color. So you guys can see statistics, you guys can see resources, because we, we keep talking about the, um, I know Eileen was on the show last, about the community resource, excuse me, the community needs assessment that was done. And they, there's so many things that our youth need, and that's why we had guests on you know, the week before about what's going on for youth and how we can help kids and it doesn't mean that they have to be LGBTQ. These hate crimes that we're talking about, or the hate issues, are, aren't LGBTQ. I'm just telling you now about the HRC and what's going on. There's hate crimes for, for being black. It doesn't mean that you have to be LGBTQ. There's hate crimes for so many different things. But you add on all those issues and then add on the LGBTQ, and it just kind of raises the stakes. Um, so again, we're gonna keep giving you guys resources and links. If if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything we're talking about, you can hit me up at Tracy at sclgbtqnetwork.org. Um, and again, yes, we do so many things in the community. We want to talk about Pride Cafe. So every Monday night from 7 to 9 at 484 Pleasant Street, people meet and get together. Um, again, there's a huge Jenga, is that Jenga game? God help me. Jenga wooden game. It's amazing. Um, and we actually got the TV and um, our video system can actually show different movies online. Um, it, it's just, just an amazing place to get people out of the bar. Say, not that I don't love our local bars, I love the place. Um, it's just a nice place to get, kind of get people to meet and kind of hang out with all the bar scene, and it's an 18 plus group. So on Tuesdays, we're here. On Wednesdays, yoga, yoga, you wanna put up, put up yoga? Okay, I'm talking about a few things that were going on. I know we're talking about hate, but how cool would it be to kind of like revive yourself and zen yourself and come to Pride Yoga? So that's on Wednesdays now, same place, 484 Pleasant Street, and the yoga is at what time, Kevin? It's from uh, 6.30 to 7.30. 6.30 to 7.30, just to kind of give people an outlet. I think it's like 14 plus group. And Thursday nights, we have our MB Agley night. So it's ages 14 to 24. I know he's putting that poster up and I shared that on several of my, the pages that I, uh, I'm allowed to post on as well as um, pages that, um, like we have a group and then you could, there's other ones you can post on. And it was just really nice to see the shares out there. I'm just asking you guys, if you guys could share this TV show today, if you guys could share on the LGBTQ Voice Facebook page, if you could like the LGBTQ Voice face, Facebook page, if you could like the South Coast LGBTQ Network Facebook page and just share. I can't tell you when I look at my Facebook memories and I go back, like last night it was like 50 something um, memories. And I go, wow, that's a lot of memories. I look back and I shared Drag Brunch, Drag Brunch, this event, that event, uh, Rhode Island Pride has an event. I just share. If you guys could help share, not just our event, other people's events, um, it would definitely go a long way and kind of helping our, our, our youth. So our NB Agley night, I know Eileen has been on the show. I don't think Dave has been on the show yet. 
Uh, you guys have met John, um, one of our other adult advisors. Uh, we get just you know to help give kids resources. We have an educational piece. It could be condom demonstration, as much as parents don't want to hear, oh my God. Um, it could be internet safety. There's just so many different topics that we hit each week. And then we end the night, you know, with fun um, games. It could be a, a quick movie. Um, and we kind of talk about, you know, what's going on in, in the kids' lives and, and how we can help. So it's a support group for, for kids ages 14 to 24. And then Fridays, we have First Fridays. So the first Friday of every month, it's actually a youth um, driven peer led event where the adult advisors aren't there. Our peer leaders are over 18 and um, they take responsibility for the for the, the center and kind of see what's going on and make sure the kids have a safe place to go. But sometimes not everybody always wants to hang out with an adult, even though our peer leaders are of adult age. Um, and then Sunday, I didn't I didn't put it up, I apologize, but on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., it's sober and out. It's an open AA group. You don't have to be LGBTQ, but there's a lot of people that feel more comfortable talking about um, alcoholism um, with and being gay with other gay, a, gay people, and I call it our gay AA. Um, so it's just kind of nice to have these resources. So when you guys see that we're, you know, we're, we're trying to do sponsorship, we, we have our Pride coming up, so we're going to be doing sponsorships for Pride. It's not like we put money in our pocket, you know. As you guys know, we have one paid position. It's our network coordinator. Everything that we do, we do for free. So when we try and ask for help, all our guests that come on here, here they don't get paid. All the time that they that they give to our community, all the time that we give to our community, and, and Kevin, I know you don't see Kevin, he's, he's camera shy. Um, it's, it's just an amazing thing that, that we can do, and we try and um, help these kids. Because as you guys have seen from our prior guests, if we can start at an earlier age and get these kids the help they need, then maybe some of these situations that we have later on in life wouldn't be so bad. Um, I sent out emails today. We reached out to the grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. I uh, hit an email out to, um, I think it's BSMI or BM, I gotta say it wrong. We're gonna have a show with um, people with intellectual disabilities and um, I guess, I don't wanna say regular disabilities, um, just disabilities in general, and have a show on that and you know what resources do they give people um, and you know what are the issues these these folks are facing I only know me being a gay woman or I always say gay even though when people say you're a lesbian um, but the hate is out there so we want to bring these groups we want to show you guys going on in the community we want to be able to help different groups and organizations so one great help that I read this week is in Jersey which is on the next you know state over Governor Phil Murphy signed a bill on Thursday New Jersey is the second state to require public schools to teach LGBTQ history. California first passed a similar law in 2011. However, they didn't get textbook until um, 2015, so it took four years to get textbooks. And Jersey's hoping that by 2020, um, the LGBTQ history, they'll have them all in, in the new textbooks. But the instruct instructors will adjust their social studies lessons for both high school and middle school students when applicable. And CNN reported that the state hopes, again, to have the books by then, but they can use online material until the books get there. But what a great step. And you kind of figured that Massachusetts would be first on board, especially, you know, passing marriage equality first in the, in the country. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can work with our politicians. I know Rhode Island's doing really well. Um, Joe Lazzarini is uh, the president of um, Rhode Island Pride now. Shout out to, um, to Joey. Um, and again, I met him in 2011 when he was Mr. Gay Rhode Island. So, you know, we, we kind of share in our community's events. We had Fall River Pride on our show, um, and they are now under our, our umbrella, the South Coast LGBT, LGBT you know, the network. Um, we're hoping to have Cape Cod Pride because they have their event coming up um, on June 22nd. So, again, if you guys have events you want to talk about, uh, if you want to, you know, support the show, Hit up Leo at the guy.com for sponsorship. Email myself. I know I'm kind of flip flop and say we really don't have any guests today. Um, it was a tough week for us and what's been going on in the community and, you know, myself as well. So next week we'll have plenty of guests and, and going further, things like that. Um, I want to kind of talk to you guys, you know, what happened, you know, 60 years ago. Um, so February 1st, I know there's a lot of holidays just came back, so we just had our, our puzzles uh, anniversary. So February 1st um, was the 59th anniversary of the start of the Greensboro sit-ins. So I know right now AJ's going to put up the, um, the Greensboro, the, the counter. Thanks, AJ. Um, so a protest started by four college students against racial segregation in Woolworths. Believe it or not, back then, um, black folks 
could not sit at the white counter at Woolworths. So these four students um, planned their, their actions um, and actually met and said, you know what, this is what we, I think we should do. So let's see, I'm going to read back on my notes, guys. Um, their actions quickly spurred a nationwide movement that sparked a fresh wave of the civil rights era. These four first-year college students at North Carolina Agricultural and Te Technical State University, and I'll say A&T after this, um, a historic, historically black public institution walked into Woolworths department store downtown and asked to be served at the all-white lunch counter. The students were um, denied service. David Richmond, Franklin McCain, I'm going to say his name wrong, I apologize, Azel Blair Jr., who I found out lives in New Bedford, so we're hoping maybe he could be a guest on, on our show, and Joseph um, McNeil. They planned their sit-in protest from a room at a and Scott Hall. By coordinating the supportive, <coughs> excuse me, with a supportive white business owner, they contacted local media and made their way to Woolworths. After buying a few items, they held their receipt and sat down at Woolworths' counter. They refused service. The four came back the next day. This time, there were more than 20 other students with them protesting. The, tro the protest grew from other schools, including white students. They regularly brought school schoolwork, taking shifts in at the all-white counter and demanding service. They sat quietly at the counter from 11 to 3 p.m. Eventually, over 1,000 students showed up to participate, including a and football team. They were met <coughs> excuse me, by angry white men, white gangs, and heckled black sittings at the L-shaped counter. Food was thrown at them. Eventually, someone called it a bomb threat and the store um, was closed. Despite harassment and opposition, the movement kept going. It quickly spread across the state and then across the South. By the end of March, 55 cities and 13 states were participating. By July 25, 1960, they'd won <coughs> with Woolworths and Crest both integrating their Greensboro um, lunch counter. And by the end of the summer in 1961, over 70,000 had attended sit-ins with more than uh, 3,000 arrests. So these folks took a stand. I know we talk about Rosa Parks, took a stand. Um, the, the governor in Jersey took a stand. We need people to take that one step and say, you know what, it, it is okay. You know, I do support you. I may not understand everything, but sit down and talk to me. So I, today I actually am um, gonna ride to here today. So thank you, Kevin, for giving me a ride today. Um, and I got a ride from my, my, my son today. If I say my kid, you might think it's my foster kid. She doesn't have a license yet. Um, I actually was at the Harbor Hotel today. We're trying to work on an event on the Friday night before our Pride event. And just sitting there, just talking to them about the history of Stonewall and what's going on. Um, I just can't imagine that, you know, again, 50 years ago, if I went into the, into the Harbor Hotel, if it was there 50 years ago, I could be arrested for them serving me alcohol. And I just, I'm 50 years ago, I'm 54, so I was four years old when this happened. And I, I just think back, how, where we were, where we're at, and so far away we need that we're, we're coming. So we're hoping to do an event at the Harbor Hotel, and just, they, she didn't know the history. So I was trying to tell her what's going on, and she asked me, one of the girls that was there before I met with um, Chrisanne, she asked me, goes, can I ask you a question? She goes, I don't understand what's going on. You know, is it, you know, transgender? What's, you know, and I said, I say the same thing. She can ask the questions. She said, well, I don't know. I saw somebody and I wasn't sure if it was a he or a her. And I said, well, this is what I do. I said, hey, I'm Tracy. If I'm not, you know, sure what people identify as. I say, hi, I'm Tracy. I identify as she, her, and hers. And I shake their hand. Then they usually say, hi, I'm Tom. And I identify as he, him, his. I just made that one up, you know, that person's name. But it's okay not to know everything. We don't have to know everything. What we should do is, is show respect. Um, and, and just ask somebody, say, you know, um, what is your, or how about this, what is your preferred pronoun? Then you know. Somebody could be still look at the male persona and identify as female. So for those people that, you know, you know name call and things like that, it's, it's gonna stop, guys. I, I, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hurting right now and I will walk and I will help and I will do whatever I can. Um, to help protect our kids in this, in, in this, um, in, in the south coast of the world, wherever we can, you know, we started Pride. I mean, uh, the Rainbow Group. Eileen has been running it. Uh, we had a, um, some of the adults or the parents of the kids um, haven't been coming through the holidays and whatnot. We have resources available for you, um, parents of LGBTQ kids that don't understand. We, if you don't have any kids, 
you don't know what non-binary is, you don't know what transgender is, you don't know what asexual is, if you don't know what these terms are, you can hit us up. We'll, we'll sit down and we'll, we'll talk to you guys. Pride Cafe is a great place. You don't have to be gay to go to Pride Cafe. If you want to go in and maybe ask some questions, so some folks that are sitting in there say, you know what, I got some questions. You can help me. Eileen, Eileen's usually there, right, on Mondays? Yeah. Or, or Antonio. Kevin. Kevin is our, one of our adult, I'm sorry, one of our peer leaders for MB Adley. So Pride Cafe is Monday nights, guys. Again, you guys you guys can go, and it's, there's a thing up there. It's just educational, socializing, kind of, it's not like a study Bible group, and that's not a sort of bad thing, I probably shouldn't say it that way. Um, it, it, it's not a group, I, I just saw that movie, um, the, uh, God help me, the conversion therapy movie that just came out. I just saw it last night. Um, and it was it was really really great. So Scott actually commented, "Thank you for what you do." Um, I'm gonna say Faruko Rog. He just gave me a little doggy and a, a little rainbow flag. I, I appreciate that, guys um, and gals, depending on how you identify. See how that goes, and you can just you can. It's okay to make a mistake. At our group, MB Adley. We have um, group acknowledgments and rules and regulations, if you want to call them that. Um, we say ouch, and we say oops. So if I said to Fred, my imaginary friend, and I said, Fred, I, I said, you know, she, and Fred goes, he, 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 Fred would say, ouch, and I said, oops, I'm sorry, Fred, it's he. So we, it's okay to make the mistakes. It's not okay to keep the hate. It, I just, you know, going over and over and over again, where we're at in our community, we don't have room for hate. I'm so excited that at the Zaitarian Theater um, about a month and a half ago, we met as a group, diversity group, at the uh, New Bedford Lyceum. I'm going to say that name wrong probably 18 times. I don't know if it's Lyceum or Lyceum. And there was like 40 organizations that got together, sat, we had breakfast and talking about what's going on in the community and what, what, what are we missing out of this group. And we're going to meet and we're going to talk about what's going on. We can help each other out. I know Third Eye was there. I know NAACP was there. Um, I just, I, I, I apologize, there were just so many people in, the, in that group, in that organization, and we were invited. Our um, network and for our kids, what we're doing, we're invited. And I actually said to them, you know what, who's missing out of this group? Seniors. Because it's, 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 you don't have to be gay to be part of this, or to, to be part of the diversity group. Um, so the, the seniors weren't represented. So I said, you know what, we, so I gave them uh, Reverend Scott's information. Um, and I said, you know what, who, who else isn't, um, oh, there was two, God help me. No, I forgot who the other one was. My brain's going everywhere today, guys. Um, the Hidden Council on Aging and the church. So that's where I was going. Thank you. Um, so Scott, Reverend Scott from the church. I said, no, we don't have any church going on in the diversity. And what's going on in the church today? So I know I believe March 13th, um, St. Peter's Church is having a spaghetti supper. Um, so I know Andy Pollock and myself were asked to speak at... I believe that event, God help me. There's a few uh, events that we had that's going on. So I have Penny Rago. Thank you, Tracy, for coming to the breakfast at the Zyterian. We were so grateful um, to have you attend. I appreciate that. Um, it was an amazing, did I say it right, Patty? Did I say Lyce Lyceum right or Lyceum? But what, what an amazing thing to have. The Human Relations Commission in December had an event at the Harbor Hotel. And there's now a human, uh, excuse me, human rights day in New Bedford. So we're getting there, we are so far away. People don't know what's going on in our community. When Eileen was on the show, we talked about the community needs assessment. Again, what the 38 percent of people didn't know where they can get free HIV testing. And we're like, oh my God, we talk about it all the time. Come to Pride Cafe. If you're 14 or 24, come to NB Agley. If you're um, AA and you want some information, there's some folks there that can help you with the AA part of your, uh, part of your life. So Patty said, both of these groups you mentioned have been noted and I've been happy to list those events on the Lyceum website. So, I mean, there's so many different things that are out there in our, in our community that you guys can find. We have a website, and it's, you know, you can hit us up, the South Coast LGBT Network, on our website. We have the resources. Actually, uh, Rebecca behind the scenes, Rebecca McCullough, um, just updated our pride, info, our pride packet information, and that's going to be going up. So you guys can kind of hit us up if you want to um, promote pride. And, you know, one of the things that I've kind of noticed in our community is some people behind the scenes kind of people and that's what I was for years I never thought today that I'd actually be on a I call it a TV show um, that I'd be here talking in front of you guys today but I'm here because um, there's a need and um, I want to you know continue to help and grow if you share events share what's going on there's a Zyterian right I um, has so many good things going on who would have thought that aha night 
And I know the community goes to AHA night because I see you all down there. On our Thursday nights, we're on 484 Pleasant Street, so where I'm downtown with our kids. And I see people walking all the way around and the doors are open and they have all kinds of stuff. A couple of years ago, people, we actually were part of the AHA night as an experimental thing. We had our doors open and we had our artwork from, from our kids doing it. And people walked in and thought it was a gallery. And then they go, what is this place? And we explained them what we were, and they, they stayed for a couple of minutes, they had some munchies and whatnot, and they, they walked out. They didn't go, oh, this is a gay place, and they screwed up, you know, screwed us and just kind of walked out. But it was amazing. So AHA night, June 13th, they are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. Who would have thought? AHA night in New Bedford, all the businesses, everything like that. So June 13th, um, again, you know, people work with AHA. Uh, but we're just doing so many things behind the scenes that we need your help. We need your support. Just show up for these events. Some of these events that we do are free. Everything at our center is free. Everything that you see is free. However, things cost money. So when we do the event, I'm hoping for May 31st, um, that's going to cost money because we, we, we need to have some events that we charge money. I know uh, two years ago at our Irish Lante Pub, we had National Coming Out Day event down there that we charged you know, um, a little bit of money for people to come in the door. Um, but like I said, you know, there's just so many things that are going on, so much heat in our community. I wanna kinda go back now. I know I'm one of the pictures that um, AJ showed up. The Holocaust Memorial Day. Again, it, it, just, it just passed, so January 27th. Um, what's his name? I'm gonna say it wrong, Kevin. Um, Auschwitz. Oh, Auschwitz. Auschwitz. I guess what Kevin's great for. Auschwitz uh, Birkow um, was liberated from the Nazis in 1945 on that day. <clears throat> so if you were um, gay, if you were homosexual, if you want to call it back then, it was homosexual, this symbol was put on your uniform. So the pink triangle was used by the Nazis in concentration camps to identify and shame homosexuals. This symbol, which was used to label and shame, has been embraced by the gay community as a symbol of pride. The pink triangles were made slightly larger than the other color triangles so that the guards could identify them from a distance. It is said that once the guards gave them harsh treatment, some of the other inmates would harm them as well. And it just kind of kills me when I read that. So I'm in concentration camps. And now I'm also getting beat up from other people in the concentration camps because I'm gay. And I, it's just like, it's like, you know, you're in here with me. We should be supporting each other. And... I got beat up twice or I got harassed twice. I wasn't there. Some people say the Holocaust never happened. Um, I believe it did. History, you know, these pictures that don't just, you know, all of a sudden come out. It's not like, you know, 50 years ago, these, somebody could Photoshop pictures because that didn't happen. Uh, but between 1933 and 1945, an estimated 100,000 men were arrested for violating a revision of law 1871, outlawing anything as simple as a man looking at another man uh, or somebody touching another man sexually in a suggestive way. Even if authorities heard there was a rumor that you looked at somebody wrong, they could arrest you. It's estimated that 50,000, excuse me, 5,000 to 15,000 men were sent to concentration camps for reasons related to sexuality. This law stayed in place in Germany until 1969. So it was, I mean, this happened in 44, 45, I can't remember my date, sorry, yeah, 45. So from 1945 to 1969, this law was still in place. Um, so and again, I know AJ showed up the picture of um, the uniform the person wore with the pink triangle, and I kind of put that up with our Pride event, because the pink triangle, again, um, was embraced by the community as a symbol of pride. They took it back. They're like, listen, I'm not afraid of that. I think, you know, we had a show. Well, I know we had a show. Our first show we did, we had two youth and two seniors on our show talking about... Um, what it was like for them, I, again, questions pulled out of a hat, and one of the words I had in it was queer. So when we first met our seniors four years ago when we joined the network, and we formed the network, they didn't want to use the word queer, because back then it was the N-word, it was faggot, and they were beat up for that. So just like the pink triangle and the people, you know, use that symbol to embrace and, um, you know, and, and take back that symbol of pride, that's what our kids are doing with the word queer. So when people, so when our seniors hear the word queer, you know, they still have their whatevers, you know, and I get triggers, if you want to call it that. Um, but our youth are empowering it, and they're embracing, you know, that word queer, one queer and. So it's just amazing that our youth show the perspective to our elders, and our elders show their perspective to the kids, and, to, and they get to understand each other. Because, you know, without the show, without our youth getting together with our seniors, um, history's going to get lost. 
our seniors, some of our seniors don't have family members to pass on this history to. So we're gonna you know, keep having these shows. We're gonna be talking about violence. We're gonna be talking about community. And one thing I wanna talk about right now, I know we've had a show on it. Uh, we did a National Transgender Day of Remembrance show. Um, but in 2017, 29 transgender deaths occurred. 2018, 26 deaths um, due to fatal violence. So 2019, uh, Dana Martin, 31, a black transgender woman, was fatally shot in Mont Montgomery, Alabama. On January 6, reports stated she was found um, on the roadside ditch in her vehicle. So somebody shot her and left her to die. Um, and that was the first, first death of 2019. And as you know on our show, we talked about the first transgender death of 2018, and it happened in North, um, excuse me, <clears throat> in Massachusetts. Um, and North Adams, thank you, sorry, I was looking at my notes. So, um, it was just, it's just hard, you know, the husband said he did it, and then he recanted later on. But right here in Massachusetts, we talk about what's going on in our community. This is last year, one year ago, a woman was killed in Massachusetts for being transgender. That's not a hate crime, you know, I, I don't know what, what, what is. Two decades after Matthew Shepard's death, 20 states still don't consider attacks on LGBTQ people as a hate crime. Matthew was beaten, tortured, and left to die on October 6, 1998. He was a student at the University of Wyoming. <coughs> Excuse me. The two were arrested shortly after and charged with first degree murder. Guys, I'm sorry to get upset when I hear these kids' stories. Um, in October 2009, the United States Congress passed the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crime Prevention Act. Um, I know Eileen went to an event and she was very um, lucky or uh, gracious to be able to see Matthew Shepard's mom speak in front of a group um, and kind of see you know, what her work has been and how hard her life has been. I can't imagine as a parent finding out that my kid was killed. I, I, just, I just can't. Um, and then obviously in the news, I mean not obviously because a lot of people may not know what's going on, um, the Empire actor was assaulted. Um, Jesse, I'm going to say his name wrong, you guys know I kill them all, um, Jesse Smollett, uh, two men approached him and began shouting racial and homophobic slurs at him and began, um, struck him in the head and poured an unknown chemical substance on him and one of them wrapped a rope around his neck and then, um, and then they fled. So this is just, and this is Massachusetts, this is the United States, this is a, an actor who has some, if you want to call it, more stability in the community, uh, or... Um, well, more well known in our community, and, and I look at it, people say to me all the time, especially when, when I work for Tedeschi's uh, food shops. I had the Fall River stores and the Bedford stores, and I had Central Falls. Like, are you afraid of, of walking these streets or you know taking the stores that you have? I'm like, no, because people are going to be people. You don't have to be gay to be shot. Look what happened was the Gallery Mall, um, not Gallery Mall, which is the mall shooting. Somebody help me out here. Silver City. Silver City. They, you know, no, I hit, the, I hit the wrong one. The Providence Place Mall. Um, God help me, I'm gonna probably get the mall wrong. I apologize, guys. They didn't go in there shooting people because they were gay. They're not going into high schools and shooting people because they're gay. There's issues going on. If we can help kids at an earlier age understand what's going on and be friends and help each other out, I think that's where we need to start. We have the Rainbow Club. We have all these groups and these organizations that can help. So if you guys wanna hit me up again, Hit up uh, Tracy at <coughs> sclgbtknetwork.org. Eileen, the same one. Hit up Leo at thebedfordguide.com <coughs> for sponsorship. I know it's going to be a little bit of a shorter show tonight, guys. Um, but I kind of want to talk about hate and what's going on in the community. If you guys have any ideas, if any projects you want help with, <coughs> we can help promote them. Um, but just hit me up. I know it's going to be a little bit early um, that we're going to be leaving today. There's a, a lot been going on. Uh, but we'll see you guys next week. And I thank you so much for tuning in. Take care.